السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome dear students to another lecture in clinical toxicology In this video we will be talking about the classification of toxic gases and uh, carbon monoxide These are the objective uh, for this uh, lecture First we are going to start with the classification um, of toxic gases There are many classifications uh, for uh, gases but for the sake of this lecture, we will be uh, discussing the mechanism of action. The first kind are called uh, chemical asphyxiants or blood gases. Uh, these gases cause uh, toxic histotoxic anoxia uh, through chemical action on metabolically important proteins such as blood. Uh, the, they bind to the uh, metabolic important proteins in the blood. Uh, examples for that would be carbon monoxide, hydrogen um, sulfide, and cyanide gas. The other uh, type is would be the simple asphyxiants. These are inert gases. They don't uh, interact with proteins in the body. So, uh, they uh, simple. They act by simple substitution uh, of the air in place, the, causing anoxic anoxia. Examples for that would be uh, carbon dioxide, methane, and butane. Uh, the third type would be the uh, vesicants or irritant gases. Uh, they produce corrosive effect on the skin and the mucous membranes of the respiratory passages, uh, leading to uh, affecting the respiratory mechanism. Uh, examples for these kind of gases would be chlorine, phosphine, and ammonia. So these are irritant gases. Lastly, uh, the nerve uh, gases they affect the respiratory power uh, causing paralysis of the respi of respiration either central or peripheral leading to respiratory failure examples for that would be the sarin and sumen gas first we will begin talking about uh, carbon monoxide carbon monoxide is a colorless odorless and tasteless non-irritant gas it has a specific gravity higher than uh, air so it this mix spreads very easily it is generated for the, uh, from the incomplete combustion of any organic material organic which means carbon containing material it is known as a silent killer statistics shows that each year around uh, 430 people die in the united states because of carbon monoxide poisoning uh, also Around uh, 50,000 visit the ER for carbon monoxide manifestations each year in the United States. When we talk about sources of carbon monoxide, uh, of carbon monoxide, we have endogenous sources, which is normally results from the metabolism of the alpha methane carbon atom in the protoporphyrin ring. This leads to a normal level of carbon uh, monoxide in the blood between uh, 0.4 to 0.7%. However, there are some cases where there is uh, expected physiological increase in the level of carbon monoxide in the blood. For example, in hemolytic anemia, uh, in females during progesterone phase in the menstrual cycle, uh, it doubles the level of carbon monoxide. And smokers also have higher level uh, of carbon monoxide are ranging from 5 to 6% and it might reach 7 to 9% with cigar smokers. Uh, if we talk about the exogenous sources of carbon uh, monoxide, um, it is a product in all kinds of air pollution, specifically automobile exhaust. 9% is carbon monoxide. And it is fatal to stay in a closed space for example, as a car garage uh, for as little as 10 minutes uh, because of the high level of the carbon monoxide, which will lead to uh, death. Uh, all different kinds of heaters like propane powered heaters, natural gas heaters, kerosene heaters, charcoal grills, portable generators, and in some chemicals such as um, paint stripping chemicals, uh, and of course during fire incidents all these compounds contain methylene chloride which is um, metabolized inside the body to produce carbon monoxide methylene chloride also uh, is absorbed through the skin 
and nearly 30% of carbon monoxide related deaths uh, come from um, faulty heating equipment. So it is an, a preventable cause of death with the proper precaution. This graph shows, uh, just for, to remind you, with the endogenous pathway for carbon monoxide inside the body. As you can see, it is the last step uh, uh, from pro, uh, protoporphyrinning uh, metabolism inside the body, it, uh, carbon monoxide is produced. The pathophysiology of carbon monoxide poisoning, as I mentioned before, it is a chemical uh, asphyxiant, so there is no direct effect or injury to the respiratory passages. It causes disruption of the cellular uh, metabolism and blocking the delivery or the utilization of oxygen uh, on the tissue level. Uh, there are several mechanisms of action, including hemoglobin per, uh, impairment, myoglobin impairment, mitochondrial impairment, uh, guanylate cyclase disturbance, and finally, microvascular injury. If we start by the hemoglobin uh, impairment, first, I need to remind you that hemoglobin has four oxygen binding sites, and binding of one site, uh, one of these sites to carbon monoxide increases the affinity of oxygen uh, at the other hemoglobin binding site. This means that oxygen will, at, will be attached to the um, three other sites of uh, hemoglobin and this will interfere with the proper release or unloading of oxygen in the peripheral tissue. Uh, this is what is um, uh, described as tissue hypoxia and this is a direct cause of um, shift to the left in the oxygen dissociation curve. When it comes to Myoglobin impairment, carbon monoxide has a great affinity to copper containing proteins such as myoglobin. It is 40 times more than oxygen. Therefore, it competes with oxygen for the binding site on myoglobin, leading to shift to the left of the, of the oxymyoglobin dissociation curve. This will lead to myocardial uh, ischemia and systolic hypertension associated with carbon monoxide poisoning. Uh, second to that is a mitochondrial impairment. So um, the enzyme cytochrome, which is uh, one of the mitochondrial enzymes resp responsible for the respiration of the tissues, has a great affinity also to carbon monoxide, around uh, ten, nine times more than oxygen, and this will lead to cytochrome uh, oxidase blockage, uh, reducing the electron transport mechanism and uh, leading to electron uh, leakage and then microchondrial damage. So now we have uh, discussed three mechanisms for uh, carbon monoxide uh, poisoning. It's first the hemoglobin impairment because it increases uh, uh, because it increases the affinity of hemoglobin to oxygen and uh, causing shift to the left of the oxygen dissociation curve. It also binds to um, the copper in the myoglobin and also leading to a uh, shift to the left of the oxymyoglobin dissociation curve. And this is uh, what explains the myocardial ischemia and the systolic hypertension uh, associated with carbon monoxide poisoning. Uh, third is the mitochondrial uh, impairment uh, affecting the cytochrome uh, enzyme in the mitochondria, leading to a cytochrome oxidase blockage. Uh, and mitochondrial damage. When it comes to guanylate cyclase impairment, uh, it is the, which is the enzyme responsible for producing cyclic GMP, uh, known, uh, which is known for its smooth muscle relaxation, relaxation effect. Uh, carbon monoxide uh, binding to this enzyme will lead to increase in its activity, uh, causing more muscle relaxation and the massive increase in, pre in brain perfusion and the production of brain edema. Lastly, the microvascular injury due to the hypoxia, which will increase the activity of xanthine oxidase enzyme. This generates a lot of reactive oxygen species, uh, which incre increases the preoxidation of brain lipids uh, and of course will lead to neurological manifestations. There are many factors that affect, uh, increase or decrease the risk to, uh, to ox 
the risk to exposure to carbon monoxide toxicity uh, high attitude so when there is a decreased oxygen tension it will lead to a more um, liability to um, uh, carbon monoxide poisoning also uh, people with high basal metabolic rate if for example children is uh, likely to be uh, affected by carbon monoxide uh, toxicity uh, patients with anemia hypovolemia or if there is increased alveolar ventilation uh, decreased the cardiac output and if there is a pre-existing uh, cardiovascular or cerebrovascular disease and uh, one of the risk factors for carbon monoxide toxicity is the presence of other types of hemoglobin for example fetal hemoglobin because it has uh, increased affinity to carbon to bind to carbon monoxide in addition to all these mentioned uh, factors in the previous slide other factors affecting the clinical picture of carbon monoxide toxicity include the carbon monoxide concentration uh, duration of exposure the heart rate and of course the age of the patient and the presence of pre-existing condition if we come to the clinical manifestations associated with carbon monoxide poisoning it depends on the level of carboxyhemoglobin uh, inside the body so uh, the mild which is from 10 to 20 percent is um, uh, is manifested by uh, tightness across the forehead and headache the patient begin to feel uh, some sort of headache um, followed by the mild to moderate which is from 20 to 30 percent the headache uh, become uh, much severe uh, and flu-like symptoms uh, appear headache dizziness nausea and malaise and it might show gastroenteritis uh, picture uh, with more increase of the percentage around 50 percent patient orientation started to be affected leading to confusion and uh, disorientation the respiratory uh, manifestation will be in the form of shortness of breath uh, blurred vision uh, weakness of the muscle impaired gait and ataxia uh, the beginning of card cardiovascular manifestation will be in the form of tach tachycardia tachypnea and uh, symptoms of angina and sometimes abnormal uh, psychometric uh, manifestation with uh, higher uh, levels there will be chest pain palpitations uh, more uh, disorientation more severe drowsiness uh, sometimes it's associated up to fainting uh, cardiovascular manifestation will show arrhythmias uh, and ECG changes will be um, uh, resembling uh, ischemic changes uh, the patient will suffer from hypotension uh, seizure and uh, might uh, develop into um, pulmonary edema and coma uh, the fatal stage when the carbon uh, monoxide or car carboxyhemoglobin level is more than 60 to 80 uh, percent there will be cardiac depression respiratory failure brain changes that will appear into the CT scan and finally death this diagram will help you understand the sequence of symptoms with progressive or prolonged exposure to carbon monoxide in carbon monoxide uh, poisoning the patient is incapable of res rescuing himself because of the decrease in sensory acuity also the depression of cerebration and the excessive muscular weakness leads to fainting and collapse uh, and this will interfere with any attempt to save himself uh, also neurological injury due to carbon monoxide is uh, is correlated with a degree of hypotension uh, the area of the brain with poor blood supply such as the watershed area uh, for example the ganglia corpus callosum and the white matter are mostly affected by uh, the disease and this will lead uh, to more neurological manifestations also uh, some people refer as um, classic sherry red or crimson red appearance of the skin uh, is due to the um, vasodilatation and uh, flushing of the uh, of the blood into the subcutaneous uh, blood vessels if we speak about complications of carbon monoxide poisoning we will divide it into neuropsychiatric complications this will happen following lesions in the white matter uh, in the form of small multifocal necrotic areas or uh, there is uh, 
extending to extensive zones of ne uh, necrosis involving both uh, cerebral hemispheres um, and with damaging of the myelin sheets and the gliosis of the globus uh, pallidus. This will be manifested as impaired cognitive functions, uh, impaired gait, uh, vertigo, memory defects that might last forever, muscle rigid rigidity, and the development of Parkinson's disease. Uh, also, uh, the patient may develop psychiatric sequelae uh, that will uh, be manifested as personality changes, depression, and anxiety, uh, agitation, and impulsiveness, and sometimes mood disorders. If we speak about the cardiovascular complications, uh, pathologically, there will be patchy myocardial necrosis, clinically, the manifestations of exertional angina, persistent hypotensions and arrhythmia, especially sinus tachycardia. If the patient is exposed to chronic low level uh, exposure of carbon monoxide, as in cases of smoking, this will uh, also uh, lead to acceleration of the um, atherosclerosis, the development of atherosclerosis in, uh, in the blood vessels. Pulmonary complications associated with carbon monoxide po poisoning will include aspiration pneumonia, because of the disturbed um, uh, orientation of the patient and uh, associated neurological damage. Uh, it may de the patient might develop adult respiratory distress syndrome and pulmonary edema in severe cases, which uh, will be caused by the direct effect of the carbon monoxide on the alveolar capillaries, or secondary uh, due to hypoxia on the, on the heart and or the alveolar membrane. Dermatological complications, uh, pathologically, there will be sub-epidermal uh, bully formation and necrosis of sweat glands. Uh, this will be manifested uh, clinically by bully over the pressure area, uh, alopecia and sweat glands necrosis. Sometimes there is intradermal vesiculation or extensive epidermal necrosis. Ophthalmic complications. Uh, will be um, diminished light sensitivity and dark adaptation, uh, also as a result of affection of the nervous system. And sometimes uh, it is manifested as hem hemorrhagic flame-shaped spots in the retina. Other complications will include uh, rhabdomyolysis and compartment syndrome, uh, DIC and thrombocytopenic purpura, uh, lactic acidosis, and hypo or hyperglycemia. Uh, this will be um, maybe mistaken with other uh, medical conditions such as food poisoning, alcohol intoxication, heart attack, uh, and manifestation of angina, psychiatric disorders uh, such as hysteria, confusion and depression, cere cerebral tumors and cere cerebral hemorrhage, may be also confused with carbon monoxide poisoning. Uh, chronic cases might uh, be confused with migraine and um, other uh, chemical toxicity such as, such as acute solvent toxicity. Uh, when we speak about management, um, in cases of acute exposure, the main concern would be stabilization of the patients and uh, removal from excessive exposure. And then we will start 100% uh, uh, oxygen therapy. 100% oxygen therapy will increase the dissolved oxygen in plasma, um, and this will act as a competitive, competi competitive in, uh, uh, with carbon monoxide on the hemoglobin binding site. So ox oxygen will be delivered at high rate, from 10 to 12 liter per minute and uh, with tight mask so the patient uh, will be uh, able to it's, it's like enforcing uh, oxygen into the patient's uh, hemoglobin and oxygen therapy is continued until uh, the carboxyhemoglobin level uh, become less than 15 to 20 percent uh, next measure will include high barbaric oxygen and will be will we talk uh, we will talk in details about this um, measure uh, shortly, and also including uh, supportive measures, which um, giving fluids to the patient if he is suffering from a hypotension or hypovolemia, sometimes we need to uh, vasopressor drugs, uh, correction of the metabolic acidosis, 
uh, alkanization of urine in cases of myoglobinuria. Uh, cerebral dysfunction uh, from brain edema, we give a non to as a diuretic uh, and um, symptomatic treatment. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy. There are several indications of hyperbaric oxygen therapy in cases of um, carbon monoxide poisoning. If the patient is symptomatic with carboxyhemoglobin more than 40%, if the patient is comatose uh, with significant neurological uh, impairment, in cases of uh, pregnant women uh, with uh, carboxyhemoglobin level more than 20 uh, or showing some signs of fecal distress, uh, if the patient has lost consciousness before, has a history of unconsciousness, if there is signs of myocardial ischemia or arrhythmia, if there is methylchloride intoxication, or if the patient is suffering from um, metabolic acidosis where the pH is less than 7.2. Uh, hyperbaric oxygen uh, act as um, it causes rapid dissociation of carbon uh, monoxide from hemoglobin. As I mentioned, it forces oxygen into uh, the hemoglobin binding site. Uh, this is oxygen is uh, delivered to the tissues. Uh, hyperbaric oxygen markedly um, uh, also pushes carbon monoxide from cytochrome C oxidase uh, binding site, and this will lead to pr uh, decrease the production of free oxygen radicals. So it is, uh, it is acting on two levels. So decrease the free radicals from one, from, um, by forcing um, uh, carbon monoxide out of the cytochrome uh, oxidase binding site, and also forcing uh, oxygen into the hemoglobin binding site, so oxygen will be delivered in to the tissues. However, there are some complications for hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Uh, as uh, a syndrome known as decompression sickness because of the intravascular and intracellular expansion of the dissolved uh, nitrogen into, uh, into the body, leading to uh, formation of nitrogen bubbles, which co may cause uh, embolism and ischemia and uh, minute capillary. Also, uh, it might lead to barotrauma, which is associated with rupture of the tympanic membrane. Uh, sometimes it causes damage of the air sinuses and uh, cerebral gas impulses. Um, also, hyperbaric oxygen is one of the causes of oxygen intoxication, which is characterized by nausea, vomiting, vertigo, uh, and other uh, neurological manifestations. Uh, and one of the main issues with uh, oxygen intoxication is the visual changes, uh, leading to retrolenticular uh, fibroplasia. Or, uh, sometimes it is complicated uh, or potentiate the production of um, pneumothorax. This is the picture showing the hyperbaric oxygen uh, chambers where the people uh, or the patient receive hyperbaric oxygen. If we speak about the post-mortem picture of uh, carbon monoxide, uh, one of the characteristic uh, features of carbon monoxide is hypostasis. It will become um, bright pink or crimson red in color. Uh, hypostasis is a stagnation of blood in the dependent uh, areas uh, of the cadaver. Uh, CNS manifestation will show a brain edema, particular hemorrhages, uh, an area of fibrosis in the cortex, medulla, and the basal ganglia. The cardiovascular manifestations will also show some degenerative changes in the heart. And respiratory system uh, will show also manifestations of edema, con congestion, and mnemonic changes. Here's a picture of the uh, crimson red uh, color of uh, hemostasis in a patient in a, in a, a cadaver with um, carbon monoxide poisoning after death. And uh, with this, we will come to the end of our uh, of this video. Uh, please remember that carbon monoxide is highly uh, preventable by uh, installing carbon monoxide detector. Uh, this is considered as a silent killer because it cannot be seen, cannot be smelled, and you never hear anything for this uh, gas, of course. So it is a preventable cause with the right uh, precaution. With this.
I would like to thank you and uh, I will be happy to receive uh, any questions if you have through my email. Good luck.